What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to switch out Yoda Loco or Todd's up top overland bed rack to something similar to mine, the extrusion overland bed rack. Now the cool thing about this video is that we actually have the owners and workers of extrusion overland with us because we are at the uh, overland expo and my truck will be in their booth. We're going to add some stuff to my rack that'll be a completely different video. Um, but we are going to show you how to build this rack with three uprights, all the right components, everything you guys need to get your rack put on your truck. Let's dive into it. How's it going guys? I'm Alan with Extrusion Overland and we're here in Colorado uh, trying to put together this bed rack for Yoda Loco. So this is what we have in front of us, most of the components of the bed rack. Uh, we're going to explain in detail the assembly, but right now we'll just dive into some of the components and get into the assembly. So we have three crossbars, we have the uprights, the side braces, the bed rails, and all the other hardware and components, right? Uh, I do want to point out that all of these components are made in the US, CNC machine components, uh, the extrusion is extruded here in the US. So we're very proud of that, and we want to keep that you know, going. But uh, yeah, we're grateful to have the opportunity here to work with uh, with uh, Josh and Todd, and we'll dive in. Hey, where's the other so let's dive into this rack a little bit. So you've got these, which are gonna be your basically top plates. They start off as solid billet aluminum, which is three and a half pounds, and now they weigh a half pound, right? So when you guys are looking at your rack, once you receive your rack from Extrusion Overland, it looks like a lot. It's very overwhelming, but once you figure out and know where everything goes, it's really not that bad. Right, so we're gonna dive into which bars are gonna be your uprights, which bars are gonna be your crossbars, which hardware, like this, is gonna go where, which spots these high torque nuts should go, and then the regular drop-in T-nuts should go, um, as well as the feet of the rack. So let's dive into it and see what we got. So step one is gonna be basically figuring out which bars go where. So everything that is the same length, line those up together. You can see that we have different sections on this table. So we have crossbars, uprights, um, bars that run from one side of the bed to the other, all the same hardwares in one spot, different hardwares in another spot. Everything is organized in a way where we know if we need a piece, we can go to that spot of the table and put it on there. So we're gonna start assembling the rack and kind of show you guys where to start. All right, one thing uh, that is worth pointing out is that a lot of people have a hard time trying to see what's what when it comes to the components of the extrusion. So. One thing that we need to know is the side braces, none of the sides are threaded, right? The uprights, only one side is gonna be threaded, the other side is not threaded. And the crossbars, both sides are threaded. So, you know, your kit's gonna come in different lengths and different dimensions, but what's basically something that can tell you what's what is the threads, right? So that's something to keep in mind. All right. Hi, I'm John, I'm a co-founder here at Extrusion Overland. Uh, previously, Alan was taking you through steps one with Josh. I'm now going to take you through what will be your step two as you prepare the hardware and kind of talk to the differences that we have here. Uh, you'll notice there's a couple different bags. Some of them are uh, larger quantities, but there's these are the main uh, hardware components you're going to have on your rack. And so if you have a Toyota, which uh, in Todd's case is, you're going to have bolts that are used to go into the deck rail. You've got a set of socket cap screws that are an inch and a quarter long for the top corner brackets. You've got a whole bunch of these button heads. Uh, and then you've got two different types of T-nuts. You've got a uh, slide in or high torque and a drop in. And uh, you will assemble the rack using these. There's a couple benefits to these, right? So you slide them in. So you have to have the open face of the extrusion when you slide it in and it doesn't move, right? So that makes it easier when you're assembling it. Now, once you have the rack assembled, you no longer have open faces and you're, you're gonna have to use a drop-in T-nut. And you just rock that into the, to the bar. You can move it where you need to. You can even remove it if you need to change it out. A lot of times a little flathead screwdriver makes your life a lot easier when you're doing this, but it's easily removed. Uh, one other point that's very important at this point is uh, the prepping of the bolts for the thread uh, thread locker that we use. We use Vibratite, which is a non-permanent thread locker, and uh, you just simply put, you know, a little drop on there, and per the instructions, 
that needs to set for about 10 minutes, 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, and then that will, uh, will interact with the threads of the T-nuts as you put it together and create a, uh, a, a, a tight fit so that the vibration doesn't cause a bolt to come back out. So while those guys prep all those bolts, we are gonna get Todd's old rack and tent off to make room for the new extrusion rack. one of the sides of the rack. Uh, in this case, we're going to put the four hole plates on the inside of the rack. And please note that, you know, this is on the same plane and you're going to have, you know, the plates like that. Obviously, we're gonna come back and put some of our drop antennas in there, but that's kind of like showing you how it looks mocked first. Uh, note your uh, plan you're in advance where your threaded sides are gonna be for the corner brackets and the opposite to that is going to be the bed rails. If you're going to have your internal part of the rack, this is how your bed rail is going to be mounted. Right? So take a note of that. So basically what Alan is saying is the square four hole plates here go on the inside of the rack and it's gonna be on the same plane. So whether it's a crossbar or an upright, they are on the same plane. So you have two running on the upright and two running on the crossbar. Now, the threaded holes for the uprights are gonna be facing upwards, right? Because that's where you're gonna mount the top plate to to run the crossbars. The other side where you're gonna mount the feet brackets, these guys, are gonna be on the bottom of the extrusion upright where it is not threaded. So from here, we're gonna drop in some channel nuts and start threading these four hole plates into place to gonna get the rack sturdy and assembled for one side. We'll repeat the same process on the other side and then kind of go from there. So all you guys are gonna do from here is once you have everything laid out, is drop in these channel nuts, just like you see Alan doing here. It goes in just like that. And what we're gonna do is put this four hole plate on top, line up the channel nuts with that and put in the shorter hardware. You see, it'll be like this. That'll go on each corner of here. This will basically hold this bar to this upright and just repeat the process. Go for it. All right guys, so one tip when you're putting the screws into the T-nut, it helps to back it out first, make sure that the threads catch. And once you hear that it kind of aligns there, then you can just go forward with it. So that helps a lot with getting the threads started. So you guys obviously probably are not gonna have four people working on a rack at any given time, especially people that come from the company that is actually selling you the rack. Um, so we're gonna fly through this rack and this install, but the whole goal here for this video is to give you the general idea of basically step one to completion, um, just so you know where everything goes. Cause like we said at the beginning of the video, it is a lot of hardware, it's a lot of bars and if you first look at it, it is overwhelming. But if we lay it all out for you guys, it's actually, it makes a lot of sense. So we're gonna keep wrenching on Todd's rack and basically do this side and repeat the process on the other side. Once we finish with the other side, we'll show you what to do oh, for the uprights. So another little quick tip as they're installing this, uh, these four hole plates here, when you guys are doing these channel nuts in the channels, you want the long end to go towards each other. So that way when this plate goes on, it covers it up and you don't have silver basically sticking out of the plate. second side uh, just one one note here is that the four hole plates 
and the, the bed side of this bracket are on the same side. So this is the inside of the rack. You've also double checked that you've got the threaded end on the top side. So that's the side that's gonna accept the, the uh, top corner brackets. All right, so we just finished the two sides of the rack. Uh, one thing that to mention there is that we leave, leave things a little bit loose. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the truck and we're gonna adjust everything there. Uh, next thing we're going to do is assemble the crossbars. Uh, so we're going to put our crossbars and top braces together here. Same thing, just like we did with the side braces. Getting closer to the few last steps on this. Now we're got our top assembly completed. Uh, the last step for that top assembly will be our corner brackets. Currently, the corner brackets have a drain hole. Just make sure that that is facing down when you install it. Uh, we are facing that out as well. In the near future, there will be a version like this. It has holes on both sides, so that won't matter anymore. But just pay attention which rev you might have. Uh, that's where we want the water to get out. Right, go for it. All right, guys, so on some versions of the uh, Tacoma uh, T-slot for the bed rails, we're going to use this uh, back plates. Uh, if you can see that it's offset, just pay attention. Uh, never put it in this direction with the uh, notch coming out. That's the way that the screw is gonna go in is in that direction, right? Uh, and then it's offset, so we gotta make sure that the ends are closer. In the long versions of the rack, we've got to make sure that that's closer. It gives us a little more uh, reach to the front and back. So, and also these are thicker back plates. So you might have to remove a couple of bolts on that to make sure that it slide through. But they're a lot sturdier than our previous versions. So now we've got both sides of the rack mounted up, passenger and driver side. We went ahead and put the top part of the rack that we assembled earlier onto the sides. From here, we're gonna use the longer bolts, these guys here, to basically attach the top of this rack to the sides. Now, key thing is to make sure that the top four hole plates are facing upwards on your rack when you guys assemble it. So we're gonna tighten everything down now that everything is on this rack or on the truck, we're gonna go through, tighten everything down as we go to make sure everything is at the level that we want it at. All right guys, so now that we put the top assembly uh, onto the sides, you know, like Josh mentioned, we're gonna start getting everything in tight. However, uh, one thing that we can do to get the structure uh, rigid is grab a ratchet strap, get it around the sides, ratchet it in and then we can adjust our side braces where we want it and tight everything, tight every bolt. We'll do the same from the other side and then we'll do the same on the top and that will be solid. So we got everything squared out really nicely. Uh, now we're going to decide where we want these side braces and go ahead and tighten our internal bolts. See how that's loose. We'll see what we want it and get it nice and tight. Now what is nice and tight? Uh, if you refer back to the instructions, we have a, a foot pen, uh, inches per pound. Don't, don't uh, quote me on that, uh, but hand tight. It's good. All right, we're finishing up the build here. This is installed the off-road reinforcement plates. Uh, on Todd's truck, we're putting four. Uh, so he has an XTR3, and if you'll notice on the website, we have quantities uh, for options of four and six. Uh, for this particular rack, it's a 14 inch height with double side braces. So you'll notice on the middle upright, there's no room for there to be an off-road plate. So we've got them on the front and in the rear, which is totally fine. 
uh, having the middle sections just uh, and add a peace of mind for dudes that go out and wheel hard and, and really, you know, really give it give it hell on the trails. So you want to make sure that you at least have these if you have a tent on top uh, and you and you really plan to do some serious off roading. You want to have these reinforcement plates. So now we have Todd's off-road brackets installed in the rear of the rack and the front of the rack. We went ahead and dropped in some channel nuts in the extrusion here to put on his molly panels. Now the rest of the extrusion guys are putting in their own tent brackets to mount his 23-0 armadillo. So the cool thing about these tent brackets is you could, if you wanted to, like I want, I'll probably end up doing, is I'll put one on the back of this extrusion bar, the front of it, and same thing to go with the middle and the end extrusion bars. But this rack is solid. Like I can shake the entire truck with just this rack. All right guys, so now we have it here. Put it all together. Uh, pretty easy once you know what's what, right? It just takes a little bit of ranging time. Um, so this version is the Dark Yoda version. We have it in the, in the website as a one of the already pre-configured 14 inches height XDR3, which is three crossbars. And uh, you know, it's it's a lot more stout. Everybody gives us compliments on how this is just solid. And it is. So don't don't uh, don't be afraid to check it out. It's uh, one of the best ones on the market. Thank you. So there you guys go. That is basically how easy it is to install this rack again when you first unbox it it is very daunting it is overwhelming but once you understand what goes where it's not that bad and like alan said the owner of extrusion this thing is freaking solid it's not going anywhere i've had my rack for two years I've taken it through Moab, I've taken it through Imogene, Schofield, most Jeep trails, and it's been solid all throughout. Now, with Todd's, he did the same thing I did, 14 inch rack, three uprights, with the off-road plates on the outside, the back and the front. Um, I think he'll have no issues with this rack, but that's the general idea of how you install it. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, leave in the comments below. Until next time, peace.